I was hoping that would be a little bit wider. Today's a very big day. I look terrible. No. Pokemon. He did it. You might be thinking to yourself, Chris, why are you filming yourself from inside of a Subaru behind a windshield? And to, to that, I would say I've become very self-conscious in front of the camera the last couple of months because I feel like I look like uh, Deadpool with the mask off, but without Ryan Reynolds' face. And that is all thanks to, to Griso, which is one of the treatments I'm on for my cancer and we are going to get into that very shortly. In fact, this is going to be my last treatment vlog uh, and hopefully one of the last videos I make on this channel about my cancer. We're going to get into that a little bit too, but I want to talk about uh, what's been going on, um, what's happening right now, where I'm at, and what's coming in the very near future. So uh, yeah, stick around. I almost forgot my camera. First things first, before I kind of get into everything, I just want to thank everyone who has contributed to my GoFundMe and continue to share it. The cool thing, or not so cool thing about cancer, is there's a bajillion ways to treat uh, different types of cancers, and there is a just a buttload of research that goes into cancer research every year, uh, which is fantastic, lots of money. Uh, but that money goes to research, not to patients, typically. And on the other side of that, whatever treatment you decide to go for for your specific type of cancer uh, is very, very expensive. Uh, it's all really expensive, no matter what you do, kinda. So, although I've been very lucky that a lot of my care has been figured out, kind of covered, uh, there's still a lot of unknowns. Um, my girlfriend and I are moving back to California uh, on July 1st, uh, which is gonna be a very expensive move, but I wanna be near my family. Uh, I want to be able to be taken care of at UCLA, which is world renowned for their uh, lung cancer stuff. My GoFundMe is still active. The link is down in the description below. If you can contribute, I'm forever grateful. If you can't contribute, but you feel good or okay about uh, sharing my GoFundMe link, um, that is also incredibly helpful. Just as helpful, someone could argue. And uh, yeah, that's enough of that. As you can probably tell from my general demeanor and my cool glasses, I don't even know if I'm in the middle of frame, am I? Maybe, who cares? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. This is different from last week where I felt pretty bad and different from uh, a couple weeks ago where I felt pretty bad too. Um, my body 
is taking to the chemo pretty damn well. I've done two sessions of chemotherapy. Uh, the last one was two Fridays ago. I'm recording this on Wednesday the 29th. This second round, a little bit of nausea, but it was pretty okay. Uh, but I did have a couple of mishaps that I'm gonna tell you about right now. You'll have seen in the beginning of this video that I had buzzed my head uh, after discussing with my doctor the plans to add chemo to my treatment regimen in preparation for my hair falling out. I thought I was gonna lose my hair. Um, and even, you know, even though it wasn't, I wasn't sure when my hair was gonna fall out, uh, basically it was like a ritual for myself to kind of psych myself up for the fact that I will be getting chemotherapy and that uh, it kind of made the cancer diagnosis feel more real. Because to be completely honest with you, ever since my diagnosis, this still doesn't feel all that real. This feels like a weird dream. I went through the ritual of buzzing my hair. Uh, here's what it looks like now. It's grown out a little bit. It looks terrible. I am not the kind of person that can rock a buzzed head very easily. But when I went to go see my uh, med onc, or oncologist for short, uh, I told her about buzzing my hair and she laughed at me uh, and she said, oh, this kind of chemotherapy doesn't make you lose your hair. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, she said that the likelihood I'd lose my hair is pretty low, though not completely improbable. I still could lose my hair. Uh, but because I'm only getting a probably most likely four infusions of chemotherapy and the fact that this chemotherapy itself is not super intense compared to other chemotherapies. I did not need to buzz my head practically. I still stand by the decision to buzz my hair because of the symbolic nature of it and the kind of like making it feel more real. Uh, but in a practical sense, it was completely unnecessary and I'm very, very embarrassed. Look at that view. Holy crap. The other mishap, I was prescribed two different medications for uh, nausea. And those medications, both their, uh, both their names start with a Z. One of them is Zofran, one of them is Cyprexa. Zofran, uh, you take whenever you feel like you're gonna have nausea or you have nausea, or you can take it uh, twice a day, eight hours in between, and you're good to go. Cyprexa makes you drowsy. You should take that at night uh, before you go to bed or when you're, you know, pretty soon gonna go to bed uh, because then if you're drowsy, you just go sleep, you go night night and it's totally okay. I, st <laughs> my girlfriend was like, hey, you're feeling nauseous this time around. Why don't you take the Zofran in the morning and then eight hours later, nip it in the bud. And then when you go to sleep, take the Zyprexa. And I was like, yeah. That's smart. That's a great idea. I'm going to do that. But what I did do instead is I mixed the medications up and I was taking two doses of Zyprexa, the drowsy one, and one dose of the regular one at night. So for a week, I felt like absolute shit. I was very, very tired. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't do anything because I was too tired and also the other on label prescriptive use case for that specific anti-nausea medication is that it's an antipsychotic so if you have schizophrenia or other psychotic stuff they will give that to you and it'll even you right out and that's what it did to me too i literally felt like i was a zombie or I don't know, some other kind of non-connected to reality thing. And it was really, really unpleasant, especially because I couldn't get up and do it. Like I was literally getting up, eating, taking my meds, feeling really, really tired and bad, and then going to sleep, sleeping for like four hours, getting up, feeling awful and tired again, going back to sleep. And I was just in bed all day for like a week. It was the worst. Um, and then I told my girlfriend about how I was feeling and she was like, are you sure you're taking the right ones? And I was like, I don't know, I'm not a doctor. And she was like, you are a moron. And she was right, I am a moron. So that contributed to the worst I felt so far 
in this whole situation, not because of the chemotherapy, not because of the cancer in my lungs itself, not because of the brain tumors, but because I took two different types of medication and I said, hey, let's swap these. So now that I have fixed that, I'm feeling pretty okay. I took my sunglasses off. So why, you ask, maybe, uh, am I standing really far away from the camera or obscuring myself behind a windshield or just generally being not very close to the camera in general? Well, like I said at the beginning of the video or earlier, uh, one of the medications that I'm on, in fact, the miracle drug uh, uh, with the trade name Tegriso, because I can't say the generic name because it's very difficult uh, for my mouth, apparently, is the targeted treatment for my very specific type of lung cancer. It's the EGRF, I believe, is the mutation. Uh, that drug targets specifically this type of lung cancer and is very, very good at uh, stopping it from being a uh, cancer or something. I don't really know. It's very technical. Uh, I don't have a degree in doctoring uh, that I know of. Um, one of the side effects, unfortunately, for this miracle drug is that there is a skin component uh, and what it can do is give you breakout acne and it can darken your skin and it can make you look kind of um, like Deadpool with his mask off, like I said. And uh, I also was on steroids, and I've since come off the steroids. Thank God they were the worst things in my life. The steroids made my face rounder and puffy, uh, and I was on a very high dose. So my face is slowly going back and deflating to the normal dimensions of what my face looked like before. Here is what I look like in February, uh, and here is what I look like now. See, not... Not great, not a great change. Luckily, this isn't forever, it'll go back to normal at some point, but right now I'm feeling very, very ugly, very, very self-conscious, and I've never been very vain, I've never been the kind of person to really worry about uh, how I look, but um, this treatment has been very eye-opening to me as far as uh, how I feel about how I look. And so now, I am away from the camera so you can't see my face super close, and I'm distracting you with this beautiful view. Look at this view, this is Lake Michigan. Uh, in April, May, it's May, uh, the waters are gorgeous. Uh, look at those clouds over there. That looks like a storm cloud. Seagulls, green, luscious garden. Um, yeah. I also sometimes get tired of the talking head videos, people sitting at a desk or a table and just like blah, 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 and you just are looking at their stupid face the whole time. I'm not throwing shade to anyone I'm just saying so that's what's happening right now that's what's going on that's what's happened uh, I have another thing another piece of news that is very interesting and good and it's good news and I will tell you very soon in a minute hold on so do you remember that time where I was talking about how I was going to get my brain zapped uh, and have all my tumors removed this time right here well, uh, last Friday, we did something called an MRI, which I've talked about before, uh, to see what the progress of my brain tumors were. When I was getting my gamma knife radiation therapy treatment, whatever, the official count was seven. I had seven tumors in my head. Uh, two of them were large, and the rest of them were teeny tiny, uh, but still a problem. Yesterday, I met with my radiation oncologist, and he reported to me that he could no longer detect any tumors in my brain. Um, to give you context, I had my gamma radiation treatment in April. It is May. It is the end of May. It is, in fact, the 29th on Wednesday, according to my Casio watch. In about a month, my treatment was a success. He pointed out to me that he can't take all the credit because I was also on Tegriso, the targeted treatment. So since that medication can break through, well not break through, since that medication can go and move through the blood brain barrier and actually target stuff that's in the brain, 
uh, he was um, humble enough to admit that some of the smaller tumors were probably eliminated because of the targeted treatment, while the large tumors were probably more of the gamma knife radiation. Uh, for what it's worth, I don't care which one is the reason why I don't have tumors in my brain anymore. The most important thing to me is I don't have tumors in my brain anymore, uh, at least nothing that is uh, detectable by an MRI, which is the best imaging we have for brain stuff. Um, I have mixed feelings about this. I thought the brain part was going to be the hardest. I thought it was going to be the most difficult. I thought it was going to take the longest. I thought it was going to be scary and it's going to take more time to try and do it more than once. And I thought that this was going to be something I'd be wrestling with for a long time and that would possibly change my personality or maybe my cognitive ability or maybe other stuff. But apparently modern science has come together to, uh, yeah, it's a miracle. I don't know. I, I don't know how to feel about it. I'm very, very grateful. Uh, my doctor, Dr. Straza, is an amazing guy. Um, I don't think I'm going to see him before I leave, but uh, I want to say to the world, I'm, he's probably not watching this, but Dr. Straza, thank you very much. You have changed my life in a very big way, and I don't know if I was very clear when I saw you yesterday how I felt about that, but uh, you're awesome, and thank you for what you've done for my life. Uh, that has given me a large boost of confidence and a big reason to be optimistic going forward. So that's great news. That just happened yesterday. So I'm riding on that high for as long as I can because, uh, like I said, last week and the week before were very difficult weeks as far as how I was feeling, and uh, I needed some good news, and this is exactly the good news that I wanted to get. So, yeah, thanks, Dr. Strauss. You're the goat, I think. Okay, I want to wrap this up uh, with just a couple of quick things. Um, if I can get serious for a moment, uh, I put on a brave face, and I am very optimistic, and I come off very optimistic, and I'm pretty silly in my videos sometimes, but uh, I want to just level with you. I'm terrified. I'm not brave. Uh, I am optimistic, and I will remain optimistic, but this is the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with. No question. Um, it's not only it's not hard just because, you know, this is my health and my life and my life is in danger, uh, essentially. And uh, that's that's bad. But um, this has been hard on everybody in my life, my family, my sisters, my dad, my stepdad, my mom, uh, my aunt, everybody I know, my stepbrothers have all been, uh, you know, touched by this and stressed out and they've been contacting me every day just to, to get updates and see how I'm doing and you know when a loved one is in danger uh, health wise or whatever it's stressful and it sucks and uh, I feel really bad for them that they have to deal with this but they've uh, to, they've approached this with grace and understanding and a lot of patience and I love them for it um, you know my girlfriend probably has gotten the worst of it because she's with me every day she sees uh, she sees how this affects me. She has to deal with me in my bad moods and when I'm being a baby and when things go wrong and when I don't listen to her and take the medication uh, that I'm not supposed to take twice a day, I take that and then I get to be a zombie that's really sleepy. She has to deal with all of that and now we're moving back to California and that's a big stressful thing. And so like, yeah, you know, that's, that's bad. A lot of people have been affected by this, not just me. Uh, and that scares me too. That makes me feel uh, a little bit. I feel bad. I feel guilty, even though I, I shouldn't. I didn't do this to myself. Um, and uh, I don't know how to deal with that. It's a feeling I don't know how to deal with. But I, uh, it's real, and I just deal with it. So that's how it is. So with that out of the way, basically, uh, what's happening going forward? This channel was started in 2017 as a photography channel. It will continue into the future as a photography channel. So I'm going to pare down uh, my cancer content as much as possible on this channel because I don't want this to become sad boy cancer channel. I want this to continue to be the photo department. I want this to be a resource for people who are into videos and who are into photography, into film. Uh, and I've got a lot of really cool photography related stuff coming up in the future anyway. So I need to make space for that. That being said, I've 
gotten like 7,000 new subscribers since I made my announcement about having cancer. And uh, hello to all of you. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for watching my videos. Um, and I want you guys to be able to feel like uh, if you're interested in my cancer journey, that you can also uh, tag along with that as well. I'm feeling more and more though that my cancer journey is very personal. It uh, involves my life, it involves my health, and involves my loved ones. So I want to keep that closer to the chest uh, and maybe not putting that out on YouTube for free all the time. So what I'm gonna be doing is I already have a Patreon set up. Uh, I'm going to be switching that Patreon, kind of like taking a different direction and making that Patreon uh, a place where you can follow my cancer journey. Uh, you can see more personal stuff, Q and A's, live stuff, uh, all sorts of stuff. If you want to follow my cancer journey, as well as photography stuff is, you know, also uh, not just cancer, but um, I'm going to try to move all my cancer stuff, most of it at least, over to the Patreon. Uh, you'll also get access to my Discord. Uh, it'll be cheap, $5 or less um, a month. I don't know what exactly I'm going to do right now, but there's going to be a link in the description. I'm going to put a post up on my Patreon uh, today so that we can kind of have a dialogue about what's going on there. If you have questions about that, please drop them in the comments below. Uh, we can have this be an ongoing thing, a beautiful dialogue between us about uh, content and about my life and about cancer and about being optimistic and being productive and uh, yeah, bing, bang, boom. Um, so yeah, let's wrap this up. This is the beautiful Hone Bridge in Milwaukee. Uh, we're saying goodbye to Milwaukee in a month. So I want to take you around some of the nicer areas of the uh, proper Milwaukee area today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for following my journey. Thank you for being here. Thank you for those of you who contributed to my GoFundMe and people who continue to do so. Uh, I'm incredibly grateful for all of you for being here. And uh, yeah, I will be seeing you very soon with more videos coming out. And uh, I hope you all stay safe and healthy and uh, don't eat hot dogs. They are carcinogenic. Thank you. Okay, goodbye.